This is episode 23 of the Wheeler's Dog Podcast. Yeah, sorry about that there at the beginning. A little bit of a false start. I had to look at my notes to remember what episode I'm on. Yeah. Yeah, and then I've changed locales for this particular podcast. Our oldest, Sam, is back from UNCW. So he is, his bedroom is right next to my office. And I've been recording the podcast in his bedroom Because he's got a nice little desk in there, and it's easier to record, and there's this big wall without a whole lot of uh, outside noise from the traffic. You might be able to hear the traffic coming through this microphone, because I'm I'm in our bedroom. I'm where the magic happens. Or as the Chigatola of rock and roller would say, this is where she sleeps. So anyway, I'm doing the podcast, recording it in the bedroom. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm venturing in all the places in the house as we go through this quarantine business. Well, stay at home business, okay? And uh, that leads me to the shopping business. Yeah, can't get used to that. Can't get used to the wearing the mask. You know, it's kind of bizarre because it's always been like a, a state law. You can't walk around in retail places with a mask. Now nobody cares. Yeah. Strange how a little virus can change all of that. And and I'm just kind of getting used to it. Like um, a little while ago, we needed distilled water. I had to make a dump run. And what I mean is take the garbage to the city. Well, not city, but the county uh, landfill management, whatever. They've got satellite places, so it's not just the dump. So I take it to the satellite place, and if I keep going south down 150, I'll run into a Dollar General store. So I figure, hey, Dollar Generals are, you know, not too bad. They still have bleach. I almost got a gallon of that. I need a gallon of that. Well, I don't need it, but I could use it. Check for hand sanitizer, none of that. No disinfectant spray, no disinfectant wipes. But they had plenty of uh, distilled water, so I got that because uh, Sam wanted to uh, use the, I don't know, some sort of steam shark something to uh, steam clean his floors. I don't know. My wife got this. She really loves it, and uh, it usually blows a breaker whenever you've got something on the other in the same room. Sucking up power, so that's always fun. You know, you plug it in, you use it for a little bit, and all of a sudden, why isn't this working anymore? Why isn't that working anymore? What in the hamburger helper is going on? Then you got to go downstairs, steep stairs, flip a breaker, and come back up and unplug the other, you know, voltage sucker. And then uh, start steam cleaning. So um, I picked up some of that stuff. I think Matthew is doing some steam cleaning too. So uh, he's in the bedroom across the way. Probably hearing every little thing I'm saying, but that's okay. I'm just kind of, you know, out there. And and the thing at the Dollar General, I, I was putting my mask on before walking in. And there was this lady, I don't know, maybe a few years older than me, pushing 60. She's just looking at me like... What is your problem? Go into the store, and of course, you know, there's uh, other people wearing masks. She was the only one, the only customer not wearing a mask. And the two ladies uh, at the front register, they weren't wearing masks. Yeah, here in Davidson County, nobody seems to care. Hmm. They, they have this philosophy, it's my time to go, it's my time to go. That's why they wander around in minefields around here. They just take chances. But anyway, so getting used to shopping with a mask, my first place breaking that in was at Lowe's Foods in Clemens. And uh, I didn't feel so stupid because there were lots of people doing it. Lots of people. People coming out of the store wearing their masks. So, and then when I stepped up, there's a cashier I know by the name of Marty, and she was, uh, hey, how's it going? 
You recognize me? Yeah. So I can't rob that place. So that's been scratched off the places to rob. So she recognized me there. And, you know, what we used to do with Bait and Jim, and sometimes Mike Han would join us. Sometimes Randy, Jamie's cousin, will join us. Uh, sometimes Richard, he'll join us. At the Beer Den on Thursdays, Half Price Pints. Well, that is gone. Can't do that anymore. Can't even drink a pint while shopping. So, you know, what's the point of shopping there if I can't drink a pint? So I've kind of kind of leveled off shopping at Lowe's, kind of venturing into the other places, swinging around, see what's available, what's not available. But then when I am there on, on Thursdays, and, and I was there for a while, it was it was a hard habit to break, as Chicago would say. I stopped getting the growlers because I got to thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. They got this tube that they stick on the end of the tap and they shove into your clean growler. You know, it's just been steam clean, whatever, there behind the or in the beard end. And, you know, they've had their hand on it. <laughs> and I don't know if they've washed their hands. I don't know if that thing's been sneezed on or not. So I'm getting like germ paranoia. I mean, I'm already a germaphobe as it is, but even more so with that. So we've stopped getting growler fills of beer. We do get the, the crowlers every now and then because, you know, they just kind of pour it into a can, pour a little nitrous, is it nitrous oxide in there? Then they cap it. And, you know, the, the crowler will stay nice and fresh for about 30 days. Although the last two I got... I swear they were flat in like three days, but hey, yeah, that's the way it goes. I'd much rather have those than the growlers for germ's sake. But then for two weeks in a row while I was shopping there on Thursdays, I kept running into the same couple. We'd get there the same time on Thursday. You know what I mean? And uh, they looked like they were maybe about uh, 10, 15 years older than me. So that would put them in their mid 60s at least. And uh, they're just, you know, about the same pace I am. And it's driving me crazy because they're always in the way. And I tend to know what I'm, I'm going for. I've got a list. Make the list. Put it on the list. I'll get it if they got it. And so these people just kept getting in the way, in the way. And then even sometimes when I would miss an aisle for an item that's on the list that I overlooked, sure enough, one of them would be there, and the other one would be at the other end of the aisle waiting for him. <sighs> they just, we just kept like leapfrogging all over each other. It was, it was horrible for two weeks in a row. So then I changed up my day for the third week. I went on a Friday instead of a, no, no, I take that back. I went on a Wednesday instead of a Thursday. And guess what? The husband was there. The wife was nowhere to be found. Oh, this guy was a piece of work. He wasn't picking up a whole lot I could tell from his list, but everywhere he went, it's like, apparently she made all the decisions. So I'm, I'm trying to pick up some flour for chigs. She wanted to make some, um, oh, what do you call it? Chicken and dumplings. And so she needed flour for the dumplings and she needed a specific kind. And this guy was over there like he was in the library in the periodicals, just reading every little thing. Just, oh God. And I'm trying to give space. You know, I'm trying to give the six feet. I'm trying to, to be cool about it more so than everybody else seems to be because, you know, People get all up in your business sometimes. I'm sitting there waiting for one of the cheese guys to, to get out of the way. I'm giving him space. And as soon as I get up there, these two ladies just bum rush. Just, <laughs> I mean, they didn't practically knock me out of the way, but they just got all up in my business. I'm like, good God. So this dude is over there with a flower, right? Just reading every little thing. And he says, I'm sorry. Do you, do you need something? I said, I'll get what I need after you're through reading. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chig says one of these days I'm going to get shot whenever I make some sarcastic, smart remark to somebody. But, you know, I, I don't know. It's just getting on my damn nerves. And then I changed up. I went to Food Lion. And guess what? That dude was there. Yeah, the dude and his wife. So they changed up too. 
I don't know what I'm going to do. But interesting thing about the food line, when I changed up, I'm walking into it, right? And there's this, uh, this, I don't know. He looked like he was about 65 years old, something like that. Some older dude walking through and he's just griping, just bitching like hell. And, and he's not watching his volume or his tone or anything. And he's just like, hey, one way hours telling me which way to walk, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, I'm trying to not say anything because, you know, this guy, first world problems, apparently all about him. But, you know, he's kind of in that, that mindset, like I have been, I've been horribly displaced. Me, this affects me and only me. So I, I'm trying not to say anything, but this dude behind me, walking up behind me, he says, excuse me, sir. He was about the same age. He said, what branch of the service are you in? How'd you know I was in the service? He said, well, I'm guessing it was the Navy. And he said it was. And he said, well, no wonder. And he started out putting out these expletives talking about how much Navy people apparently bitch about every little thing. And he was just getting up in that guy's grill and basically telling him, hey, you don't like the rules that this grocery store's put in place? Stay home. Stay home. And the guy is still like trying to put something, trying to make his point. And the other dude just said, dude, just, just shut up. And he used expletives. He's like, just go home. Go home. And his wife is standing there looking at him with, like, she couldn't believe this was happening. And I couldn't believe it was happening. But I was, like, silently praising this guy. Because, you know, if you don't like it, just stay home. You know, there's no reason to bitch. Stay home. So when the guy got in, I just uh, kind of looked at him and gave the thumbs up. Because he couldn't see me smiling while I was wearing my mask, but and he just shook his head and just kept walking in to get whatever he was getting. Now, when I did get in there, sure enough, they had the aisles all one way, and I abided by it. Even when I would miss something, I would go and skip another aisle just so I could go one way back down and get to the other one. Yes, I took it very seriously. I am taking this very seriously. Because, personally, I don't want to get sick. I've got a feeling that I'm going to. Because, you know, everybody's talking about reopening way too soon. In in my opinion. In my opinion. I'm not a scientist. I'm not anything like that. And my opinion has no skin in the game. So I don't say anything on Facebook about it. You know, like some people do. I, I just... Uh, I have people that I live with that I care about that could die from this. And I'm one of them. I got neighbors across the street that could die from this. And I don't want to be picking up somebody's crap and bringing it to them. I'm just trying to be responsible for me and mine. And I wish other people would kind of respect that. Granted, I understand the uh, economy's taking a big hit. I get it. I get it. I think I've said this in the podcast from the get-go. How it's going to affect the economy. It's tearing it up. But, you know, let's look at the... Uh, People blame the flu, like more people die from the flu, all this percentage. Like, well, if you look at the uh, the infection rate, the infection rate is much higher for this. I don't understand why people just aren't getting it. But hey, I'm off my soapbox. I'm out. Okay, no more about it <laughs> because yeah, I'm just going to do what I'm told. I'm wearing my mask. I'm going one way aisles. That's all we need to do. Conversations on the Rocks is the podcast where the guest determines the topic, and it's hosted by me, Kristen Dokas. Download the latest episode from your favorite podcast service, grab your favorite cocktail or other beverage, settle in, and let's get to know each other. And over the weekend, Jonathan and I, well, I guess you could say we beta tested the Hero Clicks online. Yeah, so what we did was we know what clicks that we have. Because we were using our league clicks. And what that means is we play games and we have um, draws out of booster packs. Uh, we sit around a table and, and we draw from from boosters. You know, not only to get new figures, but the, the things that we start off with. We start off with like a Fast Forces set and we slowly, excuse me, build up with the, the um, um, what do you call those things? Damn it, it's just, I, I was just said it, the booster packs. So we boost our teams with those. 
And so uh, Jonathan figured it out. He's got a webcam that hangs on his ceiling, gets on Google Hangouts, hits me up with a link to it. We linked up. He's got a list of the ones I'm using, so he can look up on hcrealms.com, see what figures they've, they've got, their special abilities, all that stuff. I did the same for his. And on his map, he used like proxy pieces for mine. And on mine, I just used uh, post-it notes uh, strapped, or, or I should say tacked onto different little little cardboard squares. So that keep up with where his his figures are. And you know what? It worked perfectly. As a matter of fact, we're thinking about stay-at-home orders, no stay-at-home orders. We could do this. Even if uh, Jonathan and I want to play like on a Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, we can. It's easy. The four of us. We've not tried it with three or more. We're going to try it this week. Hopefully I can get Matthew into playing one night this week because uh, we tried playing again on Sunday. We played two games on Sunday, I mean Saturday, and here's the funny thing is, (laughs) we're um, taking a break. Uh, We we were scheduled to come back at 6 o'clock, we're going to take a 30 minute break. I was going out on the back deck where Chiggs and the mill are socially distanced from Bait and Bobby, having a few uh, adult beverages out there, enjoying the sunshine. So I figured I'd take a break with them, have a beer. And so I, I I go out there, and they're like, are you guys done? I said, no, no, we're going to reconvene at 6.30. So then I get a text from Jonathan. I said, hey, man, we, we've gone out for we've gone out for pizza, so it'll be a little longer. So then I told them, I was like, well, I've, I got a little more time with you guys, because uh, Jonathan's going to go pick up a pizza. And the meal says, well, how are you going to eat that? He's going to hold it up to the webcam, and I'm going to virtually eat it. She's just kind of looking puzzled. And then Chig says, he's getting a pizza for him and his wife to eat at home. And then the meal goes, oh. So, yes, there was that. But the good news is, we're playing the game. It's beautiful. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can do it just about any time. Uh, and the thing is, you know, we've got to really put in a whole lot of trust with the uh, the roles or stuff. And at first, no, I take that back. The second game that we played, I had Johnny Boy on the ropes. On the ropes. I had Black Lightning on his first click. And Black Lightning can shoot at three people at once. And I was going to use Incapacitate. So two of them would have taken damage with that. And one of them wouldn't be able to act next round. I had it perfectly set up. All I needed to hit, all three of them, was to roll an eight or better. What do you think I rolled? Snake eyes. That is correct. So that means I don't hit them and I take a click of damage. Yeah, Black Lightning got a click of damage. And then on top of it, his ass is left hanging out there. Just nowhere to go. Just just to get eat up. And that's what happened to Black Lightning. Those other people, they could act. And uh, there you go. Black Lightning failed me. Well, he didn't fail me. My role failed me. And it was disgusting. Disgusting. First game, you know, playing new figures I hadn't really played. And um, kind of a learning curve with those. But, man. Ugh. Jonathan tore me up that first game. Second game. Mm. Rolling the deuce, man. That was that was a real game changer. But hero clicks, all one word, and that's C L I X. It's a fun game if you're into that sort of thing, superheroes type things. They even have uh, Star Wars, not Star Wars. Excuse me, Star Trek. See, it's I'm recording this on May fourth, and gosh, I am tired of that already. Good lord, I had no idea there were so many Star Trek or I'm sorry, Star Wars fans out there. You know, until you look on Facebook on May 4th. It's like, look, folks, it's not it's not cute anymore. It's not cute. As a matter of fact, it never was really cute. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, I'm not much of a fan. I watched them. I watched them. And maybe about once. I, I just remember that. You remember back in the 90s, they, they put them all out again with the director's cuts with added footage and... and CGI and different things like that. 
I went to go see those in the theaters. And my friends were totally shocked. Shocked. That I'd never seen the third installment. What is that? Uh, is it The Return of the Jedi? I don't know. It's whatever the third one is. Well, yeah, they're in the woods and stuff. Maybe The Empire Strikes Back. I don't know which one it is. But they were shocked that I didn't see that. My friends who are serious Star Wars geeks were just like looking at me like I'm insane. Yeah. I don't know. I just can't get into it. How about you? You like that Star Wars stuff? I mean, I, I like Han Solo, that, that last movie we watched, Ron Howard directed. Uh, I'm sitting there watching the whole thing, and it was it was fantastic. Great film. And then at the end, I'm like, oh, it's Ron Howard directed. No wonder I like it. Guy's a good director. What can I say? But uh, all the other movies, they just kind of kind of run the same to me. You know, I, I can't pick one apart. The uh, the Force Within. Uh, I, is that even the right title? I don't know. I remember one time my mother got me the, uh, and this was VHS days. She got me the letterbox edition of the uh, first three films. And what I mean is Jedi, Empire, and, and uh, yeah, Star Wars. And I'm, I'm like, uh, you know, um, why did you get me this? She goes, well, don't you like it? And I said, I like it. I'm not crazy about it. Uh, my brother-in-law over here loves these films. He'd probably love this as a gift. Maybe you should give it to him. So, yeah, I took a hit for the team. And the guy was very pleased to get those on VHS and long box or letter box. You know, because I don't like that edited stuff. But anyway, I never could get into the Star Wars thing like the the Mandolin, Mandalorian, whatever it is. It's currently running on Disney+. Plus. I'd like to get Disney Plus just to sit there and watch all of them in order as as the gods have intended. But um, I just haven't yet, especially now that this virus is keeping me from working. And so if I want it, I got to pay for it. So I don't want it bad enough yet. So that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. If you like irrational conversations with the cool breezes of any town USA, listen to the Schlub Resonance in Apartment 5B bicker and moan on the Apartment 5B podcast. Available everywhere you find podcasts and at tldpodnetwork.com. And the other thing is um, we've been working on getting the pool open around here. Yeah, you know, we've got this in-ground pool in the backyard and... Um, Really, they're not that bad to take care of. I've always heard people like, you know, we're on a pool. You've got to clean that thing. It's it's a lot of work, a lot of money thrown into that. Not really. Not really. Not if you watch it and you're careful and you're, you know, just diligent about making sure it's clean, making sure, uh, you know, the, the chemicals are right. It's fine. Yeah, it's a little bit of expense, you know, with electricity. You know, you've got that running and you've got the um, air conditioning running at the same time. Because that pump, my wife is like, well, you ought to just let it stop for about six hours overnight. And I'm like, no, no. You let that water sit, things will start growing. Yeah, I just can't bring myself to do it. And the one year that she was in charge of it, I think we spent over 700 some dollars in chemicals. I had to massage the thing in the shape to, uh, to close it. Yeah, to close it. So then did that. And then she turns around and has it drained so they could put in a new liner. I'm like, why did we spend all this money to get it fixed if we're putting in a new liner? Hey, it's her baby. This is one of the main reasons we bought this house because the pool came with it. Uh, the cement could use a little work because it's a, uh, well, there was a, somebody overfilled it and some of the hill behind the house washed down. And so the weight of the cement just kind of cracked everything. So we need to get some people in here to lift that up and fix that. But, you know, that was one of these things that had been put on the back burner, especially with this virus thing. Lots of things going on in the back burner. And I couldn't talk Chigs out of um, 
not firing up the pool this year because she was like, look, I'm getting furloughed two weeks out of this summer. I can't go anywhere. You think I'm going to sit around this house with no pool? <laughs> no. So she made a lot of sense. And since she is the one working, she is the one p- paying the bills, then by golly, Chig's going to get what she wants. So I've been out on the pool today, kind of getting more water off of it, getting the leaves off of it because we're going to uncover it soon. We're going to test the pool water, massage it, get what needs to be done, done, taken care of. So probably within two weeks, there'll be swimming in that pool. Of course, it's been chilly. I mean, I think tonight it's supposed to get down to like in the 40s again. This is the first year that I can remember in a long time that we're actually having a spring here in North Carolina. Usually it's been like two days of spring in March and then hot. Yeah, summer just got right on you, breathing down your neck from March, uh, April all the way down. So, you know, you might get a a respite here and there, but more or less, it just went from spring to summer in like two days. So this is the first year that was kind of like, oh, yeah, this is nice. So we're kind of enjoying it, even though we'd probably enjoy it more if we weren't staying at home. Yeah. God, I miss hitting breweries. But oh, well. We'll work through this stuff. We'll get through it. So anyway, folks, I do appreciate you checking out the podcast. Don't forget to leave your questions, comments, all that good stuff at the Wheeler's Dog Speak Line. That's 336-422-6006. And I've checked and no one has called in a good while. I mean, I get calls. I see these numbers pop up, but I don't know what the hell they are. Nobody ever leaves any messages. So if you guys are testing the waters, just go ahead and speak. On the speak line, 336-422-6006. Also, you can follow at Wheeler's Dog on the Twitter. And uh, like the page on Facebook. Just go Wheeler's Dog. Just search for it. Bam. Give it a like. Uh, I'm posting lots of things about the mill on there. I'm posting like the, the comedy things. People like my comedy. Well... I don't want to say stylings, but I make little smart ass remarks on like uh, the local news TV stations, news pages uh, and, and the stories and everything. So people like them and it's funny how people take them seriously, but I have started to take them and put them on my page. I just copy the link, put them on my page and put my smart ass comment on the top. So Check that out. You might get a kick or two out of that. So, yeah. Wheeler's Dog on Facebook. And also, um, Snapchat. I did start Wheeler's Dog on Snapchat. So, look for that. If you need, like, a username, it's Wheeler space dog. But it's all one word if you're looking for the, the username. And what killed me is somebody has started one. Don't know who did it. But someone started Wheeler's Dog Podcast Snapchat. Not very happy about that. Mm -mm, Not at all. But uh, anyway, folks, again, I do appreciate you listening. And again, thanks to Tim Beeman, you know, the the pod father of Winston-Salem. He's got all these different podcasts going on. If you can't tell from the liners I've been throwing in, got lots of different podcasts going on. Check those out. All those on the the Less Desirables Network, the TLD Network. So again, thanks to Tim for all he does. And don't forget that I am going back to the Patreon thing. So uh, apparently my thoughts were a little more dire on what we'd experience uh, with this uh, virus thing. So I'm getting back on the, uh, the Patreon. So if you'd like to support my efforts by donating $4, that's all you need, 4 bucks a month. To get unlock all the audio, and that helps me take care of this podcast, make it even better. Um, like for instance, getting Adobe Audition. Yeah, that'll get it better and all that stuff to you. And don't forget, if you get on there, patreon.com slash wheelers dog, four dollars a month. I am starting to put these podcasts on a day early. Yeah, you can get, still get them on Spotify, but I'm gonna put it on patreon.com. 
a day early. So get the Patreon app, get it on your phone, get it on your tablet, and you can listen to it a day early. Then it comes out on Spotify and uh, YouTube. So yeah, Tim also does that. Takes care of the YouTube for me, and I do appreciate that. Again, that means there will be one podcast every Tuesday for the masses. That will be available everywhere, but Patreon people will get it the day early. And and that will also be for the masses. So if you don't pony up four bucks a month to unlock all the audio, you're still going to get it. So there you go. Then on Fridays, that's the bonus episodes. That's what your $4 gets you. A bonus episode every Friday that no one else is getting. It's not going to be on YouTube. It's not going to be on Spotify. So if you want more, and, you know, who wouldn't? That's the American way. Everybody wants more. You can't ever get enough. So patreon.com slash Wheeler's Dog. And, folks, I am... Getting out of here. Of where the magic happens. Or as the Chigatola of rock and roller would say, this is where she sleeps. <laughs>